first of all, you know, really, uh, you know, kudos to the ODPP uh, for doing this, and they've been doing it for the last five, six years now, and regular basis. And this has really, uh, because it's got so much credibility, also that it has really brought it out in the open, and people are taking a lot more notice of, of crimes against women and girls and children and so on, and talking about it. It's a, it's a topic of conversation and so on. Uh, and so, I mean, it is still shocking what we see every day, but it, it, it correlates very well with what we have been finding out at the crisis center. The fact that a lot of the rapes are committed by people known to the survivor or and in fact, actually related to the survivor and so on. The, the ages, you know, the, from children, as young as three years, four years, five years old, to uh, you know juveniles who are committing that, and also interestingly, police officers. It's all out in the open there now, which is shocking. So, but you know, it is a, it's a great mirror of our society, and it mirrors what we have been finding out over all these years. The cases that are coming out in the open are, you know, a needle in a haystack. There's a lot more harassment and so goes on. And often the people who are who are uh, um, brought to task are the younger officers. It shouldn't be happening at all. No one should be doing it. So what about all the older officers, the established executive, uh, you know, officers who are there? Those cases that, that come to us but never see the light of day and, and so on. And it is shocking. It should not be happening. These are the law enforcement unit. And we can no longer say they are human also. No, they are there not to commit crimes. And that's what their training should be teaching them. They are there to catch people who commit such crimes or any other crimes, you know, so on. So, so they are the gatekeepers of the law there, you know, and that's what they should be doing. So this is still shocking. Uh, and, uh, and we have had cases of this nature where uh, uh, police women uh, of uh, female officers of the police force have been harassed, attempted rapes, and so on, and uh, and uh, and then we have been pursuing some cases, and and it just doesn't come to light at all. It's pushed around from desk to desk, from this office to the other office. So I'm really glad that now with this report, we are seeing a lot more of them who are being taken to task, right. but many more should be taken to task. I think all of us doing this work, we should try our best and push the boundaries. And this is a four-year-old child. And, it, and the allegation is very, very serious. This child has been sent back to the alleged offending environment. And the offender, alleged offender is in there. And the woman, the wife has been obtrusive. Mm. Uh, the, the partner has been, uh, the mother has been obtrusive. We've seen many cases of this nature. They are reluctant to because this is the man they, ha they are with now. There might be other children who have need to be looked after, so let's sacrifice one, and so on. And women are like that. They're also in fear because they might be living in a domestic violence situation. There are many, many reasons. I believe in such cases, the state should take over. The social welfare department is there. They can appoint guardians. They can become guardians, and the case should be taken through, the, regardless of the you know, obtrusive nature, obstructive nature of the mother or uh, another guardian or another relative. I think we can do a lot. Yeah. From our experience, we can tell you that many girls, young girls, young people have been forced to make such a declaration to protect the perpetrator and, and not to bring shame to the family or there's been pressure. put. A lot of pressure is put on young people, young girls particularly, to withdraw the complaint. And so they said they made a false complaint. So I believe when these things do happen, uh, then they need to, they need further investigation of why she has withdrawn her complaint and has said that she made a false, false complaint against somebody because there is some truth to it. And, uh, and we know that from our experience that the pressure that is put on people not to report. Okay. Yes, they haven't done enough. There are many, many reasons also. How long did the case take for them to actually 
get to a place where they are ready to charge and they want to take statements and so sometimes that and uh, and people lose interest they lose interest they just want to get on with their business and particularly young people and and so on but i think in uh, oh, did they look hard enough how can we say two people went missing you know we have been able to find women who had lodged complaints and then the police kept telling us there are two places in the two separate police stations in in Fiji in Viti Levu where they told us they can't find her our police lead the liaison officer and the counselors they pursued and pursued and they found both women in one case uh the perpetrator has been charged after so many years and in uh, the other one we are still pursuing uh, pursuing that one getting the police to to uh, go out where we have found the girl right. I really think that there needs to be a, a we need to work on this together, you know, and uh, and especially particularly with the police that we, that the police must realize their importance, mm -hmm. not their importance in grandstanding and that we are police officers, but how important they are to our society. That people look to them to bring them justice, to protect them, yeah. and they must do their work accordingly. So we need to yeah. at least have a review. Talk to people and 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 so on and and find out how we can move forward in this. How can we have a police force that we can be proud of, and how can we get a police force that is gender sensitized? The ODPP is doing the is doing a lot, and they're trying very hard. They're doing the right referrals and so on, uh, but they also need to be resourced. I believe they need to undergo regular training to be able to understand the dynamics around this and so on, because they only get to see the survivor during that time of the court case. But they also need to know what goes on before and after, and that can be done also. But I think all of us together, NGOs like us and others, uh, you know, we need to get together, government entities as well as police, ODPP, social welfare. We need to work from the same page, sing from the same page and so on. So I would say that we need to do that. And for the women who are out there, help is available. Do not give up if the police don't uh, don't uh, listen to you or don't do anything about your case. Call out to us, 1560, that is the toll-free number, National Toll-Free Domestic Violence Helpline. Uh, and and it's from any network, you can call us. Uh, and uh, whether you are raped, whether you, you have suffered some kind of a sexual assault, or uh, intimate partner violence in, in in the home from your husband, de facto boyfriend, whoever, uh, or or from uh, or or any child who finds that they, they are in danger, call this line. We will put you through to the right people if we are not able to help you. Right.